Hey, I'm Serene Desiree, and I'm here with Jim Moore, founder of The Root of Everything. Jim Moore, uh, want to introduce yourself really quick? Yeah, my name is Jamar Root. Um, I'm from Dallas, Texas, but I currently, well, actually, I'm in Dallas, Texas right now, but I usually am in Philadelphia because I go to Tempe University. I'm a senior at Tempe University. But um, about about a year ago, I started a brand called The Root of Everything. This purpose is to um, inspire others to live through passion. I was, you know, very happy in my life when I decided to do that for myself, and I just wanted to spread that message. Yeah, I love it. I uh, yeah, I stumbled on your page, uh, and it was just so positive. Like I love everything you were saying. Um, one thing that stuck out at me, and maybe I'll just uh, go kind of personal here, but you said um, you posted a story the other day that said it's better to be alone than to be with toxic people or something like that. And I was just wondering, like, does that have anything to do with why you started this, or like, do you have any stories that that kind of how does that relate to your life? Yeah, so for me, um, you know, like my life changed going to college. College was, and, and that's for a lot of people, I think um, going to college, definitely you, you kind of learning who you are. And I've been learning who I am for the last three years, really, you know, after going through regular school and going to college and being away from family, going far from home, it was like my first time being like my, my own person. And so, you know, navigating relationships, navigating people and learning who I am as a person, I started to figure out kind of where I, what I loved, what motivated me, what I kind of wanted to be, with my, what I wanted with my life. And sometimes, you know, we sometimes we surround ourselves with people who are the ones who are there first, which that really isn't the right people to be around. We kind of just surround ourselves just because they're there. You know, they might seem, it might seem fun at first, but are your, are your core values aligning with whoever you're with? Are your passions aligning with them? Do they support everything you do? Do they have, you know, just belief in you? And I started to realize there was, this is not everybody in my life, but there was a lot of people I would spend time with where our minds just weren't aligned. And it wasn't that I thought they were bad people. It wasn't that I thought they couldn't be a good friend to somebody else. I just understood, you know, I couldn't be with them, certain people in my life. And I understood that. And, and I think this is something I've spoken to a lot of people about. It's there, There's times in our lives where we kind of have to be alone to figure out who we truly are and not really relying on validation from others. I think a lot of times we're always surrounded by other people, depending on where you come from, and you never have this solitary, like really look within yourself. And I had a good amount of time to do that in a certain point in my life. And it really changed my mindset because I was able to figure out who I truly am, what I truly love and what I truly want. But when you're surrounded by people constantly telling you what those things are for you, you never make up your own opinion. And I had to do that. And then I started aligning myself with what I really wanted. And then magically the people who really loved me stayed there. Yeah. And you bring new ones into your life too. Like yes, you, of course. you put positive vibes out and all the positive people, like they resonate with you and they just come. It's awesome. Um, yep, exactly. So who, like you said, you, you found out what you love. Like what, what is your passion? Who, who are you, I guess? Yeah. So I went to college majoring in sports management because I love sports. That was my thing. I, since I was two, I was arguing with family about who's my favorite player or whatever it was. That's who I was. I was always somebody who lived through passion without me knowing it. Like mm -hmm. I, I speak it now and you, you would think like the past year, I figured that, but like, like, like kind of how I talked about that solitary I had, and it was pretty much during COVID where I kind of really looked into myself and I realized, dang, you've kind of always been like this, but going through school, I was always a sports kid, ended up really honing in on baseball played baseball all the way through to high school, could have went to college. And I decided not to because I just didn't love it like I like I used to. And I, and I couldn't be locked into something. And so when I got to college, I majored in sports management. I like sports, so I was majoring in sports. And then I figured out, and this is, this is a life-changing moment, I figured out there's a difference between liking how some things sound and really liking the day-to-day -day of things. And I love sports. I love watching sports. But I love the moment and the, the, every part of the process with working in sports. I realized that wasn't the case. I realized this wasn't really a, a true passion in terms of the, the livelihood of it. I, I still love sports and it's involved in everything I do. But working in sports was a different monster. And so I realized, you know, this isn't it. Even though I, I had great accomplishments, had a lot of internships, had a lot of conferences I had a great impact on. But I realized if I really wanted to go where I wanted to go and reach my potential, I had to do something else. And I continue to work in sports. It's what I majored in. But then 
when COVID happened, obviously all internships, all opportunities were gone. And I had always, you know, thought about doing a podcast. That was just kind of a thought because people always said, Jamar, when you speak, it's inspirational. I'm like, I don't know why. But um, so it was always in the back of my head. And then that summer, I was like, dang, I think I should. I, I still don't remember exactly what happened, but for some reason, I was like, passion. Because it's something somebody, people would always say to me, passion, 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 when they think about me. And I started thinking about it. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to live my life through it. And then from wanting to tell people how important it is to live in passion, I found a passion not only in just being creative and like figuring out different ways to tell a story through it. I, I really had a passion for inspiring other people and somebody saying, man, I did this because you said to do this. And that, that was very passionate. And then, yeah, it, it just, it, it just, passion is a crazy thing and you, you'll feel it. And then I found a, even a bigger passion in finding other passionate people and seeing what they do. And it just, it just feels electric. So yeah, that, that's the best way I can describe my passion. Oh, that's great. It's cool that that happened during COVID too. I, I love like COVID. I don't know. I had a, I had a fantastic COVID. And I, I think we kind of grew as like a collective consciousness. I, I think we kind of grew, that's kind of a hippie way of saying it, but like, I think a lot of people realized that they didn't have to work, you know, for a, for a 150,000 job, they could just take a $70,000 job and, and stay with their family. Okay. Or like, I had friends who, who started gardens instead of working, you know, 16 mm -hmm. hours a day. Like they just realized that their community was important and, and loving life was more important than just constantly looking for more money. Like it's, mm -hmm. yeah, COVID I think has changed how a lot of people see the world. And I, I, uh, I, I don't think we'll be the same. I, I, I hope we're gonna go into this new era with like a, a newfound sense of passion and purpose and, and really honing in on doing what we love. Mm -hmm. And I think I was speaking on this on somebody else's live not that long ago. Somebody was ta we were talking, I was talking to somebody and I was like, one thing people are confused about is currency and what currency is. I believe currency is in so many things. So many people fixate their mind of currency on only money and monetary things. When it's like just being happy or doing something you love, that's a sense of currency that people don't understand when they're accepting a job that they hate and it pays them $150,000 how much of that currency is towards your heart and what you love yeah. and, and do people just don't value it or they don't understand the value of it and, and time is a currency too like yes, you only have a certain amount of time you don't know how much and every time you spend time with someone you're like giving them a piece of something that will, you'll never get back like money you can you can get more money you know like if you figure out a way you can have as much money as you want but time you never get back so like it's like you're giving someone a piece of your pie every time mm -hmm. and, and like you, you know you watch netflix or you like study or you play a sports game like you're giving that time to that thing in so, the pot you have no idea how big your pie is yeah. either that's what's crazy <laughs> you have no idea yeah yeah that's it uh what's your what's your podcast called by the way it's the podcast is called the root of everything the root um of everything. so my yeah, last cool. so my last name is root and i was like and what's crazy is because i work so many jobs i was always like i do so much and they get the they get the what's the word they get the credit my boss gets the credit for everything yeah, and I was like yeah. whatever I do my name is going to be on it I don't know how but my name is going to be on it yeah so I was like should it be the Jamal Root podcast I was like that's just boring and then somehow I just I remember it just dawned on me and I was like root of everything and then on it was root of everything that's a good one I love that I love the tree insignia in your mm -hmm. uh, in your profile picture I'm I'm a huge fan of trees I used to be a gardener and like <laughs> I, I love the idea of tree roots I think I think humans have a lot of similarities with trees that we don't really realize. Like, mm -hmm. you're, uh, I think everyone has kind of a, like a main root that gives them most of their energy. So for me, I feel like it's creativity. Like I play a lot of music mm -hmm. and it's kind of what gives me like my life force. And my partner, Elliot, he's, he's super social. So like building communities and like being with other people is, is kind of what gives him his life force. And I think really it's, it's so important to figure out what the root, what feeds you in the, you know, because mm -hmm. that's, that's what you really want to do with your life is do something that inspires you and like gives you energy. And that's, and that's what the root of everything is. I believe at the root of everything is love and passion. And so that's where that kind of comes from. So it's what like we always, one of the comparisons I always talk about is a lot of us were picking things from our, our tree branches and not the root. And the, the farther away you get from your root, the less pure it is. And the pure it is, the, you can feel it. Like I, I, I can tell with somebody, when they're just doing, so like I, I bring this comparison with the tree. I love using the tree, it's beautiful because 
I tell people a lot of us were picking, um, we're picking something that isn't rooted. We're picking something that provides for the world when that's not truly the best thing we can do for the world. And I had the problem with trying to fix a problem in the world because I was, I thought that problem was, was major and that's what I wanted to fix. But I didn't think about what I could do and what I loved and then turning that into whatever it was meant to be. And so I think of it as like, you're picking off your apples too early. You're giving away your apples into something, but you're not doing something that's deeply rooted and eventually you're going to run out of apples. But if you nurture your roots and you continue to do what you love, that's really internal you're going to do something even more amazing that you could have even fathomed because you know you're you're, you're continually growing by nurturing what's pure to you so true i uh i did so I, I did a bunch of stuff growing like in my early 20s and late teens like i i did stand-up comedy i worked in the cannabis industry i was like okay yeah i just uh i was programming for a while i was a gardener so like i did a bunch of different stuff and nothing really stuck like and then i realized oh i i've been playing guitar since i was seven <laughs> I've never stopped playing guitar and for some reason I always thought like oh this isn't like a music. real job yeah music is a real job like you can't make money from music and and like music doesn't have a tangible asset like yeah, there's a song but you're you're not like making a software that you know that changes you know that you use every day and so I, I never thought of it as as something that was useful in life and then I was like fuck that like that's a terror mm -hmm. I just I can't think like that and now I I play music like and I edit videos hours a day and, and the time just flies by and I, I just have a great time doing it. And it's like, it's not always like this intense, like the best thing ever passion, but actually when I do it, it's, it's really nice. Like I'm, I'm happy. I'm having, I have like this content, steady happiness in my life that I've never really had before. Um, so, and I, I thought a lot more about this because I, I think I used to be a person that was very up and down, like a kind of dopamine driven mm -hmm. person. And and uh, lately I've got kind of gotten a lot more stability. I've built up a community, like I live in a pretty stable area. And I've realized that more than anything, like there's passion. And then after passion comes consistency, like actually mm -hmm. showing up and doing something every day. Like we say work hard, but like, I think work smart first of all, but also work consistently. Like just, mm -hmm. just put in the hours every day and like keep, keep like grinding away at it. And then, and then you get there. Mm -hmm. yeah and I think and it's crazy you're talking about that because that's literally been like the I, I don't want to say word but like the whole synopsis of this current summer for me is consistency and like for me I used to be very sporadic like I used to be I'm gonna work harder than, harder than you on this given night but I don't really have a plan like I'm just gonna work harder than you that was always my thing and it wasn't very effective it wasn't very efficient and that's one thing passion will bring into your life. I tell people all the time when I wasn't passionate about something, I would do it all the way halfway. Like a teacher would give me an assignment, write a paper, I'm writing two sentences. Like I was one of those, I would just, if I wasn't, I didn't, if I didn't care, if I wasn't writing a paper on sports, I wasn't really going to give you anything. And so I tell people all the, all the time, passion can really provide some structure into your life naturally. Like I, my dad used to kill me for doing stuff and being consistent with things every day. And I just couldn't. I have a to-do list that, and one half is what I do every day. One half is what I got to do random. It just, it just, it will provide structure in your life. And it's unbelievable because you'll do things that you never thought you could have ever done. And I'm doing it right now. And you just, it's so nice to see results six months later, like even six months later, mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, I have put in the work here and now I can do things that I couldn't do before. Like I've started uh, doing music production, like electronic stuff recently. And I'm not, I'm still kind of, I'm not like professional level yet, but now I'm doing stuff where six months ago I, I had no chance of doing and and like I, I understand so much more and I can I can kind of impress people with what I'm doing and it's like mm -hmm. yeah just you you put in the the consistency and you you definitely see the results I wanted and, do you want to oh go on I was I was just going to say and I think what's beautiful about consistency and it and it goes away people's heads because all the time they're looking for instant results they're looking for I work today I get this and it's like it, it doesn't work like that but what's crazy about like doing anything is it's not about working the hardest you can every day. It's about what's something I can make, I can maintain for a long period of time. And a lot of us, like I, I realized this, I used to work out and I would work out crazy for two weeks and then I'd be done. Yeah. And then I started making my workout shorter and I, now I do it every day. Or now with the things I do, it's what can I do on a daily basis every single day? Not what I can feel good about for one day and see instant results. And then one of the things I preach to myself is I value my 
my success off of consistency mm -hmm. and not by results because I think sometimes we get fixated on results and that's what makes this up and down amount of motivation. But when you just decide to be consistent, you're going to look up, like you said, in six months and be like, wow, I'm here. And it might've been, I'm dedicating 15 minutes a day and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's how, that's how they get you. Like uh, if you want to get stuck in the rat race, go for instant gratification, go for the mm -hmm. candy bar, go for the payday loan, go, you know, all the instant gratification is, is what, society will give you as much as you want netflix and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff like there's just an infinite amount of it and that's kind of how you stay stuck is it just mm -hmm. and and the way to kind of get out of things is to think like five years ahead or just a year ahead or whatever six months ahead whatever you can kind of do i definitely what agree of, what kind of media do you consume do you do you read books do you listen to the podcasts or anything yeah i'm a big listener to podcasts i i like podcasts the most because I can be efficient while doing something else. So yeah. I might door dash or I might be working out. I might be doing anything that I'm consuming. And it kind of takes away the, the, you know, the, the mind of doing whatever I was doing, but it's, it allows me to do two things. I, I like to hear things. So podcasts are great for me. I get to hear kind of different perspectives on different topics, but I also read. I try to read as much as I can. I, I was one of those kids who hated to read. I was reading Spark Notes to pass tests, yeah. but as I've matured, I have started to, to read as much as I can. And it's, so one of the things I do every day is either listen to a podcast or read no matter what every day. So yeah. definitely. Cool. What do you, re have you read anything good or like, or what, what have you read that's inspired you? Like, do you have anything off the top of your yeah. head? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you're familiar, but Wayne Kimmel, he's a um, venture capitalist. He has his autobiography. I forgot what exactly it's called. Yeah. Changed my life. I don't, I don't want to be a venture capitalist. But basically what he's doing is what I want to do. And so he talked about how he would basically invest in other people's futures. That was pretty crazy how people are basically betting on the next Apple. And you know what I'm saying? When, it, when they're so minuscule. But it's amazing because I really like honing in and seeing what it means to be passionate for people before they're big and famous. I like, mm -hmm. we, we like to, we see all these quotes from Will Smith all the time on Instagram, but I really want to bring to light the people who are working before it's to the light because those are the ones who are truly invested in the process because the results aren't there yet. Mm. And nobody sees the nobody sees the process. They don't like I used to get caught up in how much time something was taking. Like, oh, the song is mm -hmm. taking me way too long. It took me, you know, like my first song took me like three months to make. And I was like, oh, mm. this is taking me so long. But like when people hear it, they don't go, Oh, how long did this take you to make? They get, they, they go, this is a good song or this isn't a good song. Like nobody cares. Um, exactly. I read this book recently by Jason Calacanis. He's also a VC and uh, he invests in people a lot. Like that's, that's I think mm -hmm. it's probably pretty similar. That's his whole thing. He's just like, and uh, Peter Thiel as well. He says like, well, I guess for him, it's like uh, someone, you always invest in people with a history of, of success in previous endeavors. Like have they, I mean, it depends what you kind of success, but like, if they were yeah. a CEO of a firm before that or whatever, but yeah, like, and, and also Jason Calacanis is like, did this person, he doesn't have to have a lot of money, but like, did he, was he able to convince a group of people to, to work on the software for him for little or no money? Like, was he able to like ga gather a team and inspire them and like tell a good story? And like, so there's a lot, there's a lot you can look at before um, to predict things in VC. Yeah. I'm interested. I, I also don't know if I'll ever do VC, but it's, it's, uh, you're kind of doing God's work there by, by like you. investing in the, I mean, all those guys, like, I think we kind of look down and we kind of talk shit about billionaires a lot, man, but they're, they're mm -hmm. actually often the ones who are, who are building, they're funding the solar panels and mm -hmm. they're building our future in a lot of ways. And they're taking huge risks. Huge risks. And, and that's why we, I think that they got to where they are because they were willing to do things other people weren't willing to do. You could, there's plenty of billionaires that are probably doing things they should be doing more, but yeah. of course, there's plenty of things they've done that we got we got to respect them for. Mm. It's interesting. I I see a lot of uh, I, I mean, you know, on on Instagram and stuff like on social media, I see a lot of people talking talking trash about billionaires or like rich people in general. There's this whole thing mm -hmm. I see like eat the rich, and I'm just I'm just thinking like, man, I wonder. It just seems like a mindset that's keeping people down. Like they don't, they, they, if you hate rich people, you will literally never become rich. And then actually money is, is what gives you the ability to like, if you want to save the Amazon, 
get mm -hmm. some money and then put it towards yeah. saving the Amazon. Like you wanna you wanna help kids read, get some money and and send them books. Like, uh, and I think hating rich people kind of keeps us in this powerless state where the only thing we can do is, I mean, you can still affect your community, which is wonderful. You know, you can go, my mom, like, just taught the kid next door to read and like it's changed his life like it could have potentially changed his entire future and that's great that's a that's a ripple effect and i'm not mm -hmm. saying that like helping your community isn't a wonderful thing but having money is like you, you can it's powerful it's a powerful tool and and no matter yep. no matter what it, it depends on the type of person you are because if you're a i think people don't realize this either i'm, I'm kind of going on a tangent but like <laughs> if you have a vice if you have an addiction or like you, um, some guys really like prostitutes or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you, you have, you, you eat too much food or whatever, like any vice you have, once you get money, that will show up and that will suddenly people don't say no to you. And suddenly like you can do anything you want. And so I think in preparation, like I'm, I'm on a journey of making money. And for me, part of that is like, oh, I have to sort out my mental shit because as soon as you get rich, you can do anything you want. So you better like patch up your boat so there's no leaks. Um, yeah. It's a, it's and I think that that's something that I've also like, not even money, but even just attention yeah. is, is something like everything comes out and shows. Like everything. Like once you receive those things, things come out and show. And that's why I think, you know, the consistency and really doing things for the right reason is so important to keep intact once you enter that next sector. And it's something I honestly, I, I fear on a daily basis. I fear that moment where I think I will be. I, th I think I will be. It's just I fear that moment because I've seen what happened to other people. But I've also went through other types of mind frames and listened to other people that went through them and overcame certain things. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of it's kind of beautiful. This 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 time frame we're in with the Internet and kind of seeing how how money and fame has been detrimental to certain people. You know, some people wish they weren't even famous. There's people out there. And so I think it's always to be conscious. Again, like what, what's your true currency? What do you truly value? And if if you figure what that is, you can have money transferred to whatever that currency is. It's just, you have to be really aware of what you love, who you are, and what's your impact on the world. Mm, that's true. I think honesty is more important than we give it credit for too. I think uh, yeah. honesty with yourself, which is the hardest one. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like being true to yourself and like listening to your instincts, but also like, I, I try to make a point and I failed in the past. Like it's not, I'm not a perfect person, but like of never lying about anything, like anything at mm. all. I mean, I think lying, I've heard Sam Harris made this really good point. He said, lying's on the spectrum of violence. So if, if like, the Nazis show up and Anne Frank's in your basement, you can lie because it would also be acceptable to, to, to kill a Nazi perhaps or whatever. But like, if, if it's not a situation where somebody is in danger, lying is, is never a good idea. It always seems to bite you. Like it always comes back to you. And if you're just honest the entire way through, it makes life so much better. And like, I've, I've had times where I've, I've come up and, and confessed to something and like, I actually got, rewarded because I was honest and then people trusted me in the future more mm. and it, it was just like it always seems to work out for the best what were you saying and I, I just think lying is just delaying what's already going to happen I'm like and personally on the flip side of trust I'm one of those people at where I'm like eventually it's going to come to light yeah and I don't have the time in my mental to worry about if you're lying now do I keep it in my mind if I knew you've lied to me in the uh, past yes yeah. But I think a lot of us, we have to understand we're just delaying the inevitable by lying when it's eventually going to come out because you're going to have to lie again, lie again. Eventually, you're not going to be able to keep it up. And it's just like, I think lying or just holding back what the truth is is just going to delay growth for yourself because then you're not be able not going to be able to face things truthfully. And I think, you know, hard situations, you know, any type of pushback is in the end good for you in terms of growth. Mm, that's true. Hardships are, you uh I think you need to go, if you haven't had a lot of challenge in your life, I think you need to go out and find challenge. I think mm -hmm. that's, and you can make your own suffering, like, I mean, in a good way, like you can, but you got to find it, I think, to, to be able to push through and to, to make yourself grow. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely, I definitely agree. I think 
sometimes too much given to you can be um, a burden. I think, you know, having somebody always say yes to you is now hard to face other challenges in your life because you've never faced a challenge. And I think everybody, you know, especially I, I speak on passion a lot. And I think passion is one of those things, first finding and being accepting of what it is, is a challenge in itself, because then you're just saying, I don't care to the rest of the world and what you think I should do. And I think that inner challenge is the hardest and accepting who you are is like the hardest challenge you can really go with. I think a lot of people are facing so many other things outside and they think those are challenges, but facing the challenge of who you are and me versus me is the biggest challenge. And then, and then being able to accept it and then go out in the world and be like, if you don't like this, it is what it is because this is who I am. Like that, that kind of blew my mind because like finding is one thing and then accepting, like mm. accepting means uh, embracing doing, it. Yeah, like doing two hours of work after work to work on your passion and then maybe taking a leap of faith and like quitting your job to do this full time and and like uh, your friends saying, what's going on with you, man? Like you haven't been hanging out with us. We haven't been drinking at the bar for like two months. What's going on? Like, are you friends with us anymore? There's this whole there's this entire process that goes with accepting that that is really difficult it, it is and that's part of what i dedicate my brand and podcast to it's not just helping people find their passion but live through it like there's so many people out there that have it and then there's so many people out there who don't have it and are begging to find it and people who have it they don't understand what they just have in their lap and they're, they're missing out on it. it's going to be challenging at first but it, it's just too short of a life to live it because of somebody else's opinions or fear that you have that somebody else won't like it. It, it just isn't worth it. And you, you have to take that leap of faith, it's scary. But I promise, like, I, I, I'm a big believer in, our, we're very creative and innovative people. And I'm not one of those people to say, you know, quit your job for your passion right now. No, don't do that. But there should never be a way in your life that you don't involve it in your life in some way. There should never be a way. What do you think the best way to find your passion is? That's, yeah, so um, I think the best way to find your passion, and this is what I go through my whole entire podcast, the first season. But first, I'd like to tell everybody, you have your own journey, so there's no blueprint. Like, people will be like, they'll ask me a question, like, what it like, like, look, first of all, it's that's that's a life journey in itself. But um, first, if I had to get a blueprint, you have to be yourself. You have to decide to be yourself regardless of what anybody else thinks. And I tell people, if you don't do that step, your passion won't even be available to you because it'll be right in your face and you're going to look away from it because that's not what you're supposed to do. And so if you're not first deciding to be yourself, and then I think the next step is then being creative and looking at things. And so I, when I went in this solidarity, I was able to not only see things surface level, but see what's behind it. So sometimes I, I, I tell people all the time, I love to play baseball, but then I started to lose this love for it. But I realized I don't just love to play baseball. I'm, I'm a really competitive person. Mm. So it wasn't, it wasn't just baseball there. So when you can go down deeper and deeper and get closer to your root, you can start connecting dots in your life. And so I was able to start connecting dots to not just what it was. I, it's not just, oh, Jamar baseball. It's Jamar, you really love being compet competitive. And that's why you like sports in general. And so when I started doing other things, I was like, yo, this is the same feeling. And so if you can be yourself and then to start thinking differently, that's the first step to just making it available. And then then you just got to, when you find it, you just got to decide to go for it. You just got to go for it. Okay. What do you, so what do you mean by be yourself? I I Because I, th I think I know what be yourself means, but <laughs> can, you, can you define be yourself a little bit more? What does that look like? It. It's, it's I think natural I think it's not letting and I, I tell this other I have a whole podcast episode on this but it's like we have this sponge our mind is a sponge and early in our lives whatever was going into it was going into it with no filter it was going into it and I tell people I don't mind whatever values you have but let's go back in that sponge and feel and see if that's truly what you want in your sponge a lot of us have these core values that weren't even our core values. And so what's essential is squeezing it out and seeing what you want back in, like fully cleaning your slate and saying, okay, this is what I have a strong belief in, but why do I have a strong belief in it? And is that truly what I want? And so I think it's cleaning your slate and then adding it back in because at, at two years old, you're not, you're not able to, to do that. 
But now that you're at a, a mature age, you have to really clean your slate and understand what do I truly want in my life and not letting anything outside of you and your heart and your mind dictate what those things are and then going out into the world and not letting, I mean, obviously it's impossible. I, I feel judgment and, and, and let that into mind as a human being, but trying your best to be like, I'm Jamar and that's just what it is and not really letting other people dictate that. Yeah, that's so true. I, uh, I was playing, I have um, some family and they're, they're super young and one of them is like 12 months old or something. He's, you know, 14 months old around there. And we were doing handstands with the kids. And then he like gets on the ground immediately and tries to do a handstand. And mm -hmm. I, I just realized like babies absorb everything. Like we didn't tell him to do it. Nobody was, but he just saw it and then he tried to do it. And I was thinking like, this is great. But if I was screaming at the kids or if I was like hitting someone or if it was just a bad situation, he'd also be absorbing that. And so mm -hmm. like, especially if you grew up in a, in a place that wasn't ideal like you have to realize that like your sponge took all that shit in and like some of it you can give back like people mm -hmm. gave that to you and you can politely decline and give it back to them and like go on with your life you know like there's there's a lot of emotional healing that i think that goes with with being yourself definitely it, it and i i can't even speak to the magnitude for the other people who grew up in different situations i i can't even understand it because somebody's had so much trauma in life but it's one of those things I think is essential like we have all these things in our sponge that is just there and we're not even thinking about we're just and, and the thing is we're having actions that are from that part in your sponge that we don't even know are attached to that action and I think we have to we have to really have a lot of self-reflection because we might not know the impact we're having on the world and not knowing why and so you have you have to really go back and think about like, oh, when I was five years old, this happened. And that's why I did this to this person. Like, it's not going to be that simple of an equal to the equation, but yeah. there's a lot of things that are direct correlations to the things we do today. Yeah, I was, uh, I was studying for a while, just like for fun, not for fun, but like I was, you know, trying to work on stuff. And, and for a long time, when I studied, I hated it. And I just I had a yeah. terrible time with it. And I, I kind of went back and I was like, oh, because school, when I was in school, like, I hated school like there was this whole process where they steal your time and they force you to do stuff that you don't want to do and and actually that made me hate learning in a way and just have these negative cycles with learning and I kind of had to to undo all that stuff to actually be able to study effectively and like sometimes man you you uh it's not that you hate learning or you hate reading or you hate you know whatever it's 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 actually that there's something in your past that happened that you now have to like go through and process in order to move forward in life. Um, sometimes if you hate, I, I think a lot of people who, uh, who talk to me about procrastinating, it turns out that they just hate their jobs. Like, <laughs> and that's part of being yourself too. It's like, uh, maybe you don't need to force yourself to do this thing. Maybe you just don't enjoy this task. But, uh, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta deal with, deal with your past and like, let it go a lot of times or, or go to therapy or read books. I don't go to therapy, I just read books, but you know, it, whatever works for anyone um and i and i definitely agree because um and i think school took a toll on a lot of people and just the construct of how just the idea of school i'm not against school in general but when it comes to school we, we, we're constantly taught things that we don't want to learn and obviously if we're not introduced we're never going to find out we love it so the kid who ends up loving science if it wasn't for school teaching science he would have never known that but there, it just hits a point of this force to learn certain things. I had no interest in learning certain geometries or certain yeah. calculus. I, I had no interest in it. And it was damaging to, to, to like, to like have that for like more than 10 years in your mind. And so like, I, I, I truly do believe school in some way is almost training you to, to be, you know, you know, what's the word I'm looking for, but like obedient. Doing, yes, that's the word yeah, obedient yeah. to power. Yeah. obedient to power and just doing what they say and you know there's a part of you that has to be obedient in general to yourself in life and certain responsibilities you have but it's just a level of just taking away any type of freedom you have in your life and I don't know it's just like you have to go to this next grade and learn this it just it just felt so boxy you know it felt so I have no creativity in this situation 
And then it's people get out to the world. It's like, I have no other choice than working a job and doing what somebody else says, because that's all I know. And yeah. it's, it's just crazy. And when you, when you decide to follow your passions, kind of looping back to what we were saying, you're actually going against a bunch of people who are Completely. trained to be obedient. Like they're, it's not their fault and you gotta have compassion for them and love them. But like their entire mindset has been, you need to listen to the, the authority. You need to get a job. You need to go to college. Like have, there's this, there's a sequence in life that they think you should follow. And mm -hmm. that might not be your exact sequence. Like maybe your sequence is going off and traveling for a while and meeting a lot of people. Like maybe if your heart tells you that's what you need to do, then that's maybe not during COVID, but that's what you need to do. Like don't, uh, if, you're, if your sequence is like, you need to meditate for two years, then do that. Like, you know, not all, all these other people are kind of, we live in this life, we live in this world that says, ignore what you like doing for eight hours a day and just, just struggle through it and hate eight hours a day so you can mildly enjoy the other eight hours and then you go to sleep. And uh, it's just not, you know, living your passions is, is breaking out of that mold and, and yeah. doing what's true to yourself. It really is. And one of the big things that I learned from living in your passion is like, I don't have this thing where it's like, thank goodness it's Friday anymore. Like literally like every single day I'm like, yes. Like I'm waking up, like, like for example, this summer, and my days are filled because I'm doing what I need. This is what I do. I used to be so bored all the time because I didn't have anything like that. I, I didn't. I was waiting for somebody to tell me to come to work. Like I was waiting. And so I just think like we go through life and it's all these authorities telling us when and where to do it. And I tell people all the time, it's like, you can listen to everything you say. And if they're telling this to every single person, you're just going to end up being an average person. Like literally, if you're doing what everybody is doing you're going to end up being an average person yeah. and there's nothing wrong with listening to some of it to get to this portion of life but if you don't like say no I'm just not going to do that you will never end up having the life that you wanted to have and you just be doing something for somebody else and the thing is the people up there are doing it not for your well-being they're doing it to make sure things stay in order for themselves but when are you going to do something to keep things in order for yourself yeah and and one more thing, I think we should wrap up. I mean, this is this is awesome. I'm pretty happy to wrap up now, but like one more thing is just that I don't think people realize that you can be happy. Like, <laughs> you know, you can actually no. just, yeah, you can be happy now. And like happiness doesn't have to be, I think we confuse what happiness is because some people mm. think happiness is like having a drink at the end of the day and, and like get like getting a new car and like, but you can actually just sit in this moment and feel it inside yourself and, and just, you can appreciate every moment like it's a, like it's a beautiful work of art, like it's a masterpiece made by God or the universe or whatever you want to call it. You can you can look at the shadows on the wall and treat them like they're a Rembrandt painting made just for you. And you can experience like just passion and, and happiness in every moment of your life. And yeah, I, it's, it's, it's possible for everyone. And I think and this is I think it's great we ended it like this, but. One of the big, and I think this is from media and TV, but one of the biggest things we have about the definition of success is it's a moment. It's, I grind for 40 years to be up on this podium and win this award. I grind for 30 years to get this um, promotion. I, I grind, like, that idea is horrible to think that you're going to live your entire life for one moment. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. We, we're, we're very one moment thinkers when it comes to happiness we're thinking that guy who won the championship he hated every moment of it so he could have this one sweet moment. like no the great ones and the ones who really do things that you can't even think of the reason they're able to keep going for these long periods of time is they actually love the process of it like they actually are dedicated and loving it and if you don't truly do that the people who think that aren't ever getting to those goals that they think is happiness because they're not indulging themselves in the process. So they never even get that one moment they're thinking of. And even if they do some miraculous way they do, then they're like, what now? And I'm not going to live my life for a what now. I'm going to live my life for right now. I love that. All right. Thank you very much, Jamar. That was an amazing episode. I'll see you no soon. No problem. You too. Thank you so much.